Welcome to my web series. My name is Daskies and this is where I jump between old and new games to answer the burning question, is it worth it? Today on the cutting block, Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch Remastered. Now I want to rip this off like a band-aid and come out straight forward and say, there is a part of me that loves the first 30 hours of this game. And the last 10 hours of the game are definitely something I did not enjoy. Now, for some others, that may be something you may enjoy. And I'm not going to go straight into that. We're going to go into like the story. We're going to talk about Oliver. We're going to talk about all the good stuff. But first, I wanted to just let you guys know that for the first 30 hours, this game is just phenomenal. This being a game that released in 2011, it actually holds its own. It can definitely keep up and even run laps around some games that are released today. I will say that the storyline is fantastic and where you follow Oliver and his whole character arc and everything feels like as if it's right from a Studio Ghibli movie. Now that Studio Ghibli polish that you're looking for will be there for the animation and for the story, but it is definitely not there for the actual voice acting. It not being like AAA actors and whatnot, I don't think they had that kind of budget to go and grab somebody like that. For the voice actors, you have a bit of a range. Either you have some great voice acting where you're like, damn, this guy can speak to me all day long, or they grab a voice actor who just can't voice act. Like the main character, Oliver, is strong in some moments, and there's some moments where his voice acting is so horrendous it just feels like they recorded it in a rush trying to speed them out of there as fast as possible so they could just get the next lines from the next person losing the character losing the whole it just feels campy at one point or another it just feels like you could do it i believe in you eh, it's a little rough so, <laughs> like your dick how do you know who i am i'm really really sorry oliver huh your mummy i'm sorry i couldn't save her huh i don't why would you be sorry for that in Studio Ghibli fashion, you have the main character suffering a massive loss, either through being dealt a bad hand luck-wise or whatnot, and this is definitely one of those situations where he loses his mom early on in the game. And he's coping, and his coping mechanism is going to this little fantasy world. Now, as all this is going on, you're thinking, is this even actually happening to him, or did he imagine all this happening to him? I don't know, it's, it's, it's a little bit of Studio Ghibli fun. As for the gameplay, I have to say this is like Kingdom Hearts meets Pokemon Arceus meets Final Fantasy. And I will say the only difference that's here is the fact that the mana pool or the mana system is a very uh, annoying nuisance. I will say that I wish they had some sort of like regeneration system or a better way to accumulate mana without having to defend like special moves from either monsters or from bosses. Now I understand the flip side of the coin where on the other side you'll say, well, if you had infinite mana, then you have infinite health. And if you have infinite health, then there's no real difficulty to this game. And I understand where you're coming from on that point. I'm just saying that like, it gets a little frustrating having to like constantly wait for a attack to come out so you could get these little balls to heal yourself to survive more attacks to get maybe two or three shots in it, some of the boss fights were like uh, abnormally long just insanely long and it felt like it was for no reason now i will say when you finally do take these bosses down the ones that are super long to kill it feels so good man like it is just one of the best feelings for a video game and you get this like conquered it yes vibe like oh dude it i will say for the amount of times i bitched on stream and complained that like i don't understand why this game's so hard why are they doing this to me when i finally did beat it it felt solid bro solid power he's down now before we go into the final 10 hours of the game, I want to bring up one thing that was very annoying. So in this game, you have two characters that you control outside of yourself. And these characters are affected by two buttons that you press, offense and defense. Now, there has been multiple occasions where I throw my characters into defense and they sit there and take dumb damage because why would the AI actually block an attack or defend it? Did he just fucking die? Fantastic. I love this game. How much do I love this game? So much. Or even evade. Why would they? They just sit there and they take dumb damage straight to the mouth. Like in my playthrough, I am sure that 80% of the playthrough, Esther, the, the girl in the game, was taking dirt naps just the whole entire time. Like, I don't think she was alive for more than maybe an hour. Honestly, two tops, she was taking dirt naps here and there, and it was just very frustrating. Very, very frustrating. Warning! Warning! Incoming spoiler. I'm going to spoil some shit because there's no other way for me to talk about this without spoiling it. So you've been warned. There's a little time thingy on the bottom. If you don't go to that time, that's on you, not me. 
It's not my fault if you stay. All right, let's do this. Okay, so at the end of the game, you finally go and fight the white witch. I like to call her the white bitch, and she is annoying. Why is she annoying, you may ask? Well, I'll tell you right now. In the final fight, the creators of the game, they decided to make it a three-stage fight. Yes, I know, at one point or another, they heal you. But if you lose at any given point during this three-stage fight, you are reset back to the first stage, and the fight can last 30 to 45 minutes. See how this can be frustrating? The fact that you're put back to the beginning and there's multiple stages that can one-shot you and kill you makes it so that it's super, super frustrating. So, at one point or another, I decided I'm gonna make this easier for myself. I'm gonna go level. But you're stuck on a fortress that you can't leave, from what I understand. And now I have to go and look for one little fucking little it's a little monster, it's called a Toho, and it has a little stick. And it's the only thing worth killing because it's worth 25,000 XP. And when you killing that one thing is worth maybe killing 50 mobs. So now this thing has a super low spawn rate. Guys, the last 10 hours was me in this castle looking for these fucking bastards with the little sticks. I swear I was so mad. I'm gonna be haunted by these things for the next year to come. I'm going to be having little dreams of these little stick guys running around and just beating me over the head with them. Just absolutely just bonking me. Anyways. Now, while this was all happening and I was looking for these little Tohos, at one point or another, I, I just broke. And I couldn't do it anymore. And I decided I'm going to just beat the game. I'm going to beat it. And I did something I never thought I would ever do. Put the game on easy. And oh mama, I beat that witch up, bro. She got the one two skip to the loose sent back to the sky, brother. Oh wow! And it felt so good. It felt I was broken because I went on easy. And I know, I know it. I'm, I'm disgraceful. Shame, shame on me. But you know what? F it. I did it. I beat it. She's done. I don't have to deal with this this fucking witch anymore. Thank God. Oh, hey, you're back. For those who are not, you know, wanting to be spoiled, this is where the timer comes back in. Okay, so we're all back on the same page? Alright, cool, perfect. So after that long rant that I just went through, I complained about the ending of the game, and how long it took, and how rough it was. And that I ended up even breaking, and I want to repeat it for those who are not a part of the time frame. I switched the game mode to easy. I know, I know, I'm a bad person, I did the wrong thing, I'm not a good gamer, I'm a noob, I, I suck. I know, do your thing, write a little thing in the comment section saying like, I, I can't wait for like the whole little, and like, did you even really play the game if you're gonna play it on easy? Like, I swear to God, it makes no sense. We all know the other people that make reviews play this on easy. Don't fucking lie to me. We all know it. Anyways, regardless of the situation, that means I technically beat the game, which means I could give my final verdict finally on whether or not Nino Kuni is worth it. I will say that you know, there's probably going to be people in my comment section going nuts saying, Well, if you didn't play it on the hardest difficulty, then how do you know what this game is? And see, I, I beat it on the hardest difficulty and I played it with one eye closed and my hand behind my back and I and I was hanging upside down from the ceiling. Like, there's going to be people like that and that's fine. But for those who are regular people that are not like hardcore JRPG enthusiasts, you may have a bit of a hard time playing this game. But if you're a fan of Studio Ghibli and you love the stories and you love the world building, you're going to love it. And even if you play it on easy, you know what? I will I won't judge you. <laughs> I beat the game on easy. The hardest boss, though. I only beat the ending for those who are going to, like, mortify me. But we got to talk about pricing. And real quick, this game retails for a price without any sort of special. $64.99. I have to say that... For a final verdict, this game is definite pickup if you could get it on special, but if you're paying full price, guys, unless you're a JRPG fan, don't do it. This game goes on special like all the time, and just wait. It's you've already waited this long. Like at this point, like you've gone like 10 years without it. Just wait. Anyways, this is yet another episode of Is It Worth It? My name is Daskies, and I hope you enjoyed it. For the most part, if you want to be a part of the recording process, it's really simple. All you gotta do 
is open up the video description, go down to where it says Twitch, and click that little link, follow me, and when I go live, you could be a part of it. Isn't that crazy? Awesome. All right, anyways, it was a pleasure. All the best, never change. Watch out for strangers. Look, both ways are crossing a street. And yeah, I love you, you beautiful bastard.